an outer space phenomenon that's only happened twice since 2016. Both venues and Jupiter will be visible to the naked eye tomorrow in a rare optical illusion known as planetary conjunction. The planets will make their closest approach around 6 p.m. tomorrow night, but experts say the best views are in the early morning before the sun rises. So let's check with in. With Venus. Venus, that's okay. What did I say? I'm sorry. Venus. You said Venus. And Jupiter. And yeah. Jupiter? Yeah. Both of them, okay. Yeah. okay. So let's check in with first of all, I mean, I'll just Paul sure Hagen right. is here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, these phenomena, I always wonder, like, what did people in the past really thought about these big phenomenons, right? Yeah, that's where a lot of myths come from, mm -hmm. is when you see something unusually bright in the sky, and you're like, what can that possibly be? Well, you know what it is now. If you want to get up early and look for it, here's what to do. You have to get up before the sun comes up tomorrow morning, so the best viewing is going to be around 5.30 a.m. You want to look to the southeastern horizon, and you'll see Venus and Jupiter appearing close together. The planets themselves... There are going to be hundreds of millions of miles apart, but it's going to look like they're side by side, so it'll look like a pretty bright dot. Temperatures at that point around 50 degrees, some in the upper 40s, some in the low 50s. Here's the good news. Mostly clear skies, just a little bit of patchy fog, but I don't think it's going to be that widespread. Here's what to expect as we head through the rest of the weekend. Mostly clear skies tonight. Tomorrow, a stronger onshore breeze, so temperatures are going to back off by a couple degrees, but then we warm up again on Sunday. Just a mini ride on the temperature roller coaster as we head through the first half of next week. The dry weather, though, Though, is going to continue. Current wind speeds, well, they're pretty reasonable for late April. SFO is the windy spot as usual. Whenever the wind is this direction, it just gets funneled through the San Bruno Gap. 28 mile an hour sustained winds right now, the strongest by a wide margin. Most of the other sustained winds inland around 15 miles an hour. That's typical April territory. The winds will pick up tomorrow, though, and the pollen count is going to follow along with the wind speeds for the next few days. Stronger winds tomorrow, high pollen count. It's not quite as high on Sunday with lighter winds, and then the winds pick up again on Monday. Even when the winds pick up, we're not talking about a return to the blustery conditions that we had Wednesday and yesterday, but it's still going to be noticeable, and the forecast remains dry. Rain chances basically near zero through the middle of next week. There's a slight chance of a couple of showers Thursday into Thursday night, maybe lingering into Friday. The long-range data is showing some signs of optimism of at least a trace of rainfall for the northern half of the Bay Area. But if anything, I think those rain chances would go down instead of up. As we round the corner into May, the rain chances in the long-range data tend to be more illusory, where they're saying, hey, there's a chance of rain, and then it just completely goes away. We'll keep an eye on this one and hope that it doesn't go away. Just some high clouds out there right now. No rain out of those. Temperatures reached up to the mid-70s in San Jose, Napa, and Concord. Made it up to the mid-60s in San Francisco. These numbers will be about 2 to 4 degrees cooler tomorrow with the return of those stronger onshore winds. Current temperatures, a mix of mostly 60s and 70s. 55, though, at Half Moon Bay. It's 79 degrees still right now in Fairfield, close to 80 degrees there in Solano County. Temperatures later on tonight will drop down to the upper 40s and low 50s. That's pretty normal for the last morning of April. High temperatures, though, ending up very close to average as well, a degree or two on either side of our late April normals. Let's zoom in for a closer look. On the coast, upper 50s for highs, a mix of upper 60s and low 70s down the peninsula and around the south end of the bay, with mostly low 70s in the Santa Clara Valley, but reaching all the way up to the mid 70s around Morgan Hill. Mostly low 70s for inland parts of the East Bay until you go on the other side of the Diablo Range, mid to upper 70s for Pittsburgh, Antioch, Fairfield, Brentwood. Those temperatures are going to be the warmest around the entire Bay Area on Saturday. Low 60s in the city, mid to upper 60s for Oakland and the East Bay. Upper 60s bayside in the North Bay, but temperatures farther inland reaching up mostly into the low 70s and some slightly warmer temperatures as you go farther inland until you get into inland Mendocino County and Lake County, where you'll be just a little bit cooler. Temperatures warm up for everybody on Sunday, then the temperatures back down on Monday. There's the roller coaster ride, depending on the strength of those onshore winds. Brief offshore winds Tuesday and Wednesday will allow temperatures to hit the mid-60s in the city, low 70s in Oakland, and around 80 degrees in San Jose, into the low to mid-80s for inland parts of the East Bay and the North Bay, and then that slight chance of showers heads our way on Thursday. It's just a slight chance. Don't get your hopes up for anything more than a trace of rainfall, but it's something we'll keep an eye on as we head through the weekend and into next week.